And you know, smell that. That, my friends, is the sweet smell of malted barley being dried here in the kiln. More specifically, it's the smell of burning peat. Now, peat is a young form of coal, and another factor in determining a whiskey's unique final flavor. Ooh, is it just me? Was it getting a wee bit hot in here? Oh, it's yourself. I was just having a wee breather. A bit like the malt here in the malt store, you might say. It's, um, waiting. It's biding its time, building up its strength a wee bit. Oh, well, that's it. Onwards and upwards. Well, downwards anyway. This is the milling machine. This is where the bomb gets rudely awakened, crushed, ground, and pulverized into what's known in the trade as grist. It's only noisy in here, but it's all part of an ongoing process. All a means to an end. Oh, it gets everywhere, this stuff. Oh, shit, make it. This is the mash tun, a container where we mix together the purest Scottish water with our grist from the mill. The sugar in the mixture is dissolved, producing a sweet liquid known as wort. The wort is then cooled, ready for the next stage. The residue left in the mash tun can be used to make animal feed. The wort might not look that special, but let me assure you, this will become pure liquid gold. So what, I hear you ask, is the one magical ingredient which helps turn a malty, sugary wort into something with, well, let's say, a wee bit more of a kick to it? Well, the answer is right here. This is yeast. of this microscopic yet explosive living organism simply cannot be underestimated. Amazing! Attention. The liquid is heated in a pot still, and because alcohol boils at a lower temperature, it separates from the water. The vapor rises up the neck and is cooled and condensed back into a liquid by a copper coil immersed in cold water known as... The worm. Here we see the cooling and condensing process in action. The liquid is now known as low wine. But it needs to be distilled again to further increase its alcohol content. And that takes place here, in the spirit still. Each distillery has its own unique shape of copper pot still. Another factor in ensuring that each distillery produces its own unique flavor of Scotch whiskey. By now, 
The liquid is so strong, it has to be kept under lock and key by customs and excise. Here in the spirit safe, the still man weaves his magic by judging precisely when to send the first part of the run, or four shots, and the last part of the run, or faint, back to be distilled again. Meanwhile, the middle cut, or heart of the run, is sent to the spirit receiver. But it's still not Scotch whiskey. Oh, no. Not for a long while yet. These casks won't see the light of day for at least three years. Some not for 12 or even 50 years. During this period of maturation, a whiskey's unique final flavor is further enhanced by the wood of the cask that it's stored in. Its clear color changed to a golden hue. What was once nothing more than barley and water magically matures into Scotch whiskey. Ah, the sweet smell of evaporating whiskey. Up to 2% each year just disappears. The angel's share, they call it. Ah well, I'm away to join the angels myself. Slanjava.